Book of Genesis, chapter 21, the birth of Isaac. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. And she said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse, it, nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. God protects Hagar and Ishmael. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, laughing. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not be heir with my son Isaac. And the thing was very displeasing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Be not displeased because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For through Isaac shall your offspring be named and I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot, for she said, let me not look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Up, lift up the boy, and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy, and he grew up, he lived in the wilderness, and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for, for him from the land of Egypt. A Treaty with Abimelech At that time Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me or with my descendants or with my posterity. But as I have dealt kindly with you, so you will deal with me and with the land where you have sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. When Abraham reproved Abimelech about a well of water that Abimelech's servants had seized, Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, and I have not heard of it until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two men made a covenant. Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock apart, and Abimelech said to Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs that you have set apart? He said, These seven ewe lambs you will take from my hand, that this may be a witness for me that I dug this tunnel, Therefore, that I dug this well. Therefore that place was called Beersheba. Because there both of them swore an oath. So they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, rose up and returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned many days in the land of the Philistines. Alright, so in this chapter we see that God has fulfilled his promise of giving... Abraham a son he has fulfilled his promise of giving Abraham and Sarah Isaac and something that I want to point out is that it took here I'm just gonna read through my notes real quick Alright, so something that I want to point out is that it took around 14 years 
for God to fulfill his promise to Abraham. And this is, again, a reminder that we are on God's timeline, not ours. God works on his timeline. Not the, not what we're used to, right? So, God knows the perfect time to give us these blessings. He knows the perfect time to fulfill his promise. And he will do, he will do so when it is time for him to fulfill his promise. So when we pray for something, right? We need to remember to have patience within us so that we can actually receive these blessings. Because it might take a while, it might take a couple of years even, but God will fulfill his promise. He can't, he is a God of integrity. He can't just give a promise and then not deliver on it. In verse 4, we see that Abraham circumcised his son. Abraham circumcised Isaac in the way that God had commanded him. Now this is important because Abraham is a strong figure of faith. When we look at Abraham, we see a man that was faithful to God. And it is very important that we follow in those same footsteps, that we listen to what God commands of us. Because without that, we won't be in contact with God. We won't be doing His will. And it is important that we do God's will. Verse 13, And I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So here we see a... Again, that we... That Ishmael is promised to also be a ruler of a nation. Ishmael will also be very fruitful in his life, just as Isaac will. However, Isaac is more fruitful. Well, I think Isaac's more fruitful. Again, I haven't really read through the full book of Genesis yet. But I believe that Isaac is more fruitful. But it's important to remember that Ishmael is also a descendant of Abraham. So God blesses Ishmael too. And it's also important to remember just how Ishmael came about. Because when Ishmael's mother, Hagar, went out to the... Something weird just happened with the camera. Uh, when Ishmael's mother, Hagar, went down to the wilderness, she started... Well, I don't know if she wept, but, you know, she was out in the wilderness. She was, you know, very, she felt dishonor towards uh, Sarah. And God had heard her. God had heard that, you know, she was in distress, that she was concerned, she was anxious. God had heard her. And Ishmael means God hears so it's important to remember that Ishmael is essentially like in touch with God. And we get to see an example of this at 9, verse 19. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. So I'm just going to read through the uh, previous few verses there. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the baby where he is. So again, this has happened before. This is the second time that the angel of God has spoken to Hagar. And as I have said in my video on, I believe, chapter 19... Wait, no, uh, chapter, chapter 16. As I have said in that video, I believe that the angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ. And here we see that, again, Jesus is talking to Agar. And that he has heard Ishmael. Ishmael is heard. And the last note that I have 
is I want to point out that in verse 28, Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock apart. There's that reoccurring number seven. We have seen this happen in a few of the other chapters where seven is like a number that is reoccurring throughout the Bible. Like in Revelations, it's the seven bowls, the seven horns, you know, like all those sort of things. The seven angels. I I think it was angels in Revelation. I mean, I could be wrong on that. Don't take my word for it. God rested on the seventh day. Seven is a very important number. And we see that Abraham has set apart seven new lambs to make the covenant with Abimelech. So that they can be witness to it. There was another thing that kind of stuck out to me when I was reading this. And I want to see if I can find it again. Or I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. Alright, yeah, I don't... I don't think I'm going to be able to find it again. I'm going to read through it and I'll probably have what stuck out to me in the description if I can find it again. But, you know, right now, that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. Keep running when no one else is. Have a blessed day.